tilt and distortion and spacing. Oh my. Let's get image peaking and doing some analysis. Welcome to SETI Astro. Now, as always, if you haven't gotten the latest version, be sure to head over to SETIastro.com under Astro Program, SETI Astro Suite. We're up to version 2.19. Click Get It Here to go to the GitHub repository where you can get the version for your operating system. Before we jump into SETI Astro Suite, let's talk about maybe why you would want to inspect your image. Uh, so this will allow you to inspect all the corners, look at a grid. We'll get into that more, but it's to really help you identify any focus issues, tilt issues, and maybe you're just curious as to uh, how the imaging plane in your telescope looks on your sensor. Uh, are you too far or too close to your corrector? There's a lot of different reasons why you want to, well, you may want to look at your uh, focal plane as in a focal plane analysis. The other thing uh, I, I don't think everybody realizes is that your telescope does distort the, the image a little bit. So I also have a, a distortion view in here where you could actually see how much, like in arc seconds, your image is distorting uh, the actual ground truth image of the sky, so to speak. I mean, a really quick, you know, internet search, you're going to be able to find things like why the focus shifts across uh, like wavelengths. Here's the differences between just a simple lens, an achromat, an apochromat, a superchromat. There may be curvature from spherical aberration, coma, astigmatism. The actual focal plane called the Petzvel surface may be curved itself, uh, which leads to all sorts of different uh, items as well that you, you may be interested in. Right, it could be a simple curve, it could be more a complex curve. And then to compensate for a lot of this curvature, professional telescopes, like this is the this is the sensor array on the, the Kepler Space Telescope, it's actually curved. And you're, you'd find that in almost every professional sensor, there's curvature on the sensor itself to compensate for things. But us amateurs, our sensors are flat. We don't have fancy curved sensors to uh, fully correct the focal plane curvature in our telescopes. So sometimes it's just good to know what your telescope produces at the focal plane. And, uh, you know, just, just look for issues and it helps you better understand and know your own optical setup. All right, let's get into it. I have an image open here. Uh, you can find the new image peaker. It's this little uh, square of squares up in the corner. You could also find it under star stuff, image peaker. For those of you familiar with PixInsight, this thing's called Aberration Inspector there. And just uh, click Auto Stretch if you're in the linear stage. And you're going to get a very familiar grid where it's all the corners, the sides, and the center. So you can quickly look at your stars in the corner versus in the center. Uh, you could adjust your grid size to different um, numbers of grids, if number of tiles in your grid if you want. You could also fiddle with the, the panel size, the separation. And then down at the bottom here, in the bottom left, be sure to put in your pixel size, your focal length, and your aperture. Now this is going to help uh, different calculations later when we're doing the analysis. You can see up in the upper portion, there's a, there's a drop down that says analysis. So right now it's none. It's just going to give you the normal like aberration inspector that uh, those of you in PixInsight will be familiar with. If you go to tilt analysis, now that's going to analyze the image and do a 2D linear plot essentially uh, of how far out of focus you are. It does use uh, sin lens approximations in order to calculate the actual micron differences, but this will show you the amount of tilt that your sensor has uh, to the actual focal plane. That way, if you have something like tilt adjustment, things like that can help you determine and correct for tilt. We can close that. The next one is the focal plane analysis. Now, this is going to do a lot more items than just looking at kind of the tilt. It's going to give you a full with half max heat map, an eccentricity map, and what's really cool is an orientation map. So let's go ahead and, and look at all these. So the full width half max heat map that shows you just kind of the, the span of star sizes across the whole image. And you could see the, the span down here 
uh, seven to eight and a half uh, microns and our pixel size 4.6 so we're roughly in the the two pixel regime for full width half max eccentricity that's just the eccentricity so you can see how the stars are shaped across your imaging plane right and then the orientation this is going to be the orientation of the major axis of the star so as the eccentricity goes up to get more oval right that oval can be oriented in different directions so in this case it's just kind of a, a blob of orientation here there's no real directionality across the whole imaging plane and that's what you want to see you don't this is what you want to see our next example you're going to see something very interesting that we're going to talk about all right i have here a different image from a different telescope setup we have our full width half max heat map and the eccentricity heat map what's interesting here you can see that there's a a definite portion where there's almost no eccentricity so they're all circular here and you, as you go further and further away they get more and more elongated and then in our orientation map you can see now that there's an actual node and it looks like a rainbow in a in a circle that means as you move around essentially this dark patch here the orientation of your star is rotating as you move around this is a very telltale sign of your sensor being too close or too far away from the corrector all right i grabbed this image from altair astro and this is exactly what we were talking about in the image peaker so if the camera's too close to the flattener you get all these radial shapes to the stars and then if the camera's too far from the flattener they're all arranged axially but in both cases what you can see is the stars rotate around as you go around the center of the image so both these images would show that same kind of rainbow pattern that we're seeing here in our orientation map so this is really telling you that the sensor itself is too far or too close to the corrector and then it's really easy to go in and then just look at the image itself and see how they're rotating around and you can see here in the in the corners they're rotating around the the blobbiness so to speak is in the axial direction it's rotating around that center point so this is a case and it's not much here it's very subtle right the stars are really good in this image so the sensor is just a little too far away from the corrector lens here just just probably a micron or two to to scooch it in a little bit closer and that would more round out your stars in this particular optical setup the other analysis to do is the astrometric distortion analysis so when you click this if you don't have a full astrometric solution including distortion polynomials it's going to trigger solving it via OSTAP with a full polynomial distortion argument to OSTAP to, to provide if you also have used astrometry.net and solved that way that should also have the the full distortion polynomials in there it will pop up an opportunity for you to save the plate solved fits uh, that way you do have it and it'll always be plate solved you don't have to I'm just going to click cancel it's still going to run the distortion analysis and what you're going to get back is a grid on the left and a histogram on the right now the grid on the left would be if you just put in a perfect grid with parallel lines and it distorts it the exact amount that your optical system is set up and then on the histogram it has the number of stars and the amount of distortion away from the true the true RA index. So in this particular optical setup, you see that the most stars here are below an arc second away of, of where they should be. And you can see in the chart to the left, you know, the, the big bulk of them are really close down to that under an arc second amount of distortion. But along the edges, especially the corners, you can see it starts getting pretty further away so it's well corrected almost to the almost to the corners right 
Now here's a different telescope, different optical setup, and you can see the distortions are a, a lot more extreme. Uh, we're getting up to over 10 arc seconds in, in the one corner, and you can see the, the shape of the grid. It's, it's very uh, barrel-shaped, very kind of fish-eyed lens uh, look to it. So it's, it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, and if you see a telescope labeled an astrograph, those are specifically designed to not have astrometric distortion. So like a Ritchie Crichton telescope, even though it has other aberrations associated with it, the centroid of the stars are still well corrected to the ast actual astrometric uh, distortion. So if you're looking to really do some serious sky survey and mapping, you're going to want to look for a telescope that says astrograph on it because that will have very minimum astrometric distortion. Now those other examples were from some refractors with some lower end um, focusers on them and that's ultimately what's giving the tilt from the sensor to the actual plane. This is from my imaging newt where I spent a lot of time uh, making sure I got a really good collimation I've upgraded the focuser to a nice, the big 2.5 inch moonlight focuser, uh, a, a lot of things like that. And you can see, here's the tilt analysis. The span here is, is all zeros. Uh, so I have a very flat to the actual focal plane sensor for my main imaging setup. And then again, here's on my imaging newt, full width half max heat map. Uh, it's like right at about one and a half pixels is the is the max, and you can see the span's very small. The eccentricity is kind of blob, so there's no like weird directionality to, to any of the stars, and you could really see that on the or orientation map. It's it's zero. It's it, it they're they're all there's there's no preferred direction to the orientation of the elongation in any of the stars, and that's exactly what you want because that means it's properly spaced from the corrector as each star is essentially round at that point and it can't uh, find a, a, a solution for a preferred orientation. And then here's the astrometric distortion grid for my imaging newt. Uh, you can see it's kind of kind of in these two corners. One's actually kind of closer to the center and one's a little further away, but a huge bulk of the center portion here is really low, all less than an arc second away from you know the true RA and deck and same same with the histogram so it definitely makes an impact for your images if you spend time to really do a good collimation really try to correct for any tilt really properly space your sensor from any correcting lenses that you may have it, uh, it all makes a difference in the end one last thing I didn't uh one last thing I forgot to mention is after you put it in your pixel size and your focal length and your aperture and stuff, uh, be sure to click save settings and exit. When you exit, just don't hit the X because that's going to update these. So the next time you open them, you'll have your pixel size, focal length, aperture, all that already in there. Well, I hope everybody has fun exploring uh, their focal plane, what's going on in their actual optical setup. It's probably something not a whole lot of people look at or fiddle with or really observe, but it should help you better familiarize yourself with the equipment you have. Please comment, like, and subscribe.